Hello everybody, just a quick announcement to make before this video really starts. Um, this all information that I use in this video for part one and part two and part three and further on will be related to, to the My Hero Academy stuff. And that is that I'm using the anime slash dub. So anything that's from, you know, the manga or uh, the sub. I'm not using, so there is going to be a lot of different things going on, probably, just to clarify. So I'm trying to make sure I announce this every video from now on, so you guys are aware. And another thing as well is, since Infamous is a video game, and My Hero is a TV show, a lot of the characters in Infamous will have different abilities, because you're taking a video game media and putting it into a movie or a TV show and stuff like that. So there's going to be a lot of different things added to Cole's arsenal for the sake of storytelling. And as well as just how infamous and how, how video games and TV shows are to one another. So that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you all for clicking on this video and I hope you enjoy. What if Cole was in My Hero Academy? Thank you. Hi y'all, I hope you're all having a great day. Hope you're all having a good day. Uh, this is part three of what if Cole was in My Hero Academy. And Zeke. And Trish. And a lot of other infamous characters as well. So I guess we shouldn't call it Cole was in My Hero, but more like if Infamous was in My Hero. That's a weird title. title. But uh, anyway, it's been a while since the first video came out. The first two videos came out, so I think it's a good time for a recap, don't you think? I think it's a good time for a recap, definitely essential for uh, when this came out and whatnot. So let's get started where we last left off. It's uh, Cole and Zeke got through the first few days, at least two or three I want to say. I forgot exactly how long it's been since uh, they joined and whatnot. So, But in these very few days they've been in Class 1A, they've already created a rivalry with the anger, explosive tempered boy himself, Bakugo, who got his ass kicked by Cole during the training uh, part of the uh, the combat training, when uh, the heroes had to pretend to be villains for a little bit. Well, two had to pretend to be villains or whatever, you know, teams and whatnot. And uh, and then during the, um, the uh, test to throw the baseball and among other things as well, uh, Zeke threw the baseball further than Bakugo, so Bakugo's pretty upset about that one too, so he's already got two, you know, demonstrated cork users that are better than him. He's a little pissed, he's a little pissed right now, you know, not too happy, you know, he's all like, hey, fat ass, and baldy, I want to fight you right here, right now, you two losers. Hey, what do you say to me? And Cole's just like, hold it, Zeke. <laughs> I have a terrible Zeke, I have a terrible Cole voice, so get ready for really bad acting. <laughs> Hold it, Zeke. Wait a minute. What did you call me? Okay, you're getting capped now. <laughs> Team Bakugo is blasting off again into the USA! Ooh, I think that's not a bad idea. Ooh, then we can do a story where P meets uh, John from, uh, you know, John from the, I think, the FBI. I forgot, I forgot what agency was in. Shit. Um, and then they can, like, team up, and Bakugo finds out that Cole was the result of the blast that, you know, killed Deku, and then he's gonna get all mad, and he wants revenge for his Deku-chan, you know, his dear beloved. You know, that, that's, that's awesome, right? I think we're gonna do that. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, we're not doing that. Um, at least, I'm not yet, but anyway, this is not sounding like a recap now, is it? It's more like a spoiler, so let's just get started with part three. I'm excited. Let's go. <laughs> it's the next day at UA, and the class of 1A is trying to get inside, but the press, ah, the press are at the gates, ready to ask any student, teacher, or worker, even the janitor, damn it, the janitor, at UA, any questions evolved around All Might, and how he's been doing, how has he been as a teacher? <laughs> Most students and teachers, and even the janitor, were able to get inside and avoid the press. Some, though, were unfortunate to hear them shower questions over them. For instance, like Cole, Zeke, Achaku, and Tenya Ida. <laughs> and, uh, Shoto. Sorry. Sorry. La. Lieutenant Aizawa. I'm just gonna say his name is Lieutenant Aizawa. Fuck with the Japanese names and their real first names. Uh, anyway, so after they were able to avoid the press and 
you know, finally get inside. Inside Class 1A, Lieutenant Izella tasks the class to find who should be the class rep for 1A, and if so, everyone, and it's so, everyone gets excited and say they should be repped. Well, everyone was shouting as well as Zeke. Cole tried to get Zeke's attention and tell him not say anything about being class rep. Zeke asks why, and Cole tells him that they're grown adults and that they, the other students should be able to take the responsibility so that they can learn how to cooperate with one another. And that's what being class rep helps with. These kids couldn't be good heroes if they weren't capable adults. Zeke thinks that's a dumb idea and says he was never gonna be he was never class rep, so you know, fuck that. And Cole laughs and says well, you never wanted to be one either. <laughs> and Zeke just replies with, Well, brother, today will be the day. <laughs> Tinya, in the corner in the back, says that they should do this in a democracy-esque fashion and have everyone vote for what who should be class repped and whatnot. Tenya, you know that never works. At some point, the democracy is just going to be a disguise for, you know, just, you know, hand-wavy picky shit. <laughs> but, sure, for first try, we'll do it. <laughs> But uh, as Tinius is saying this, Ida is saying this, he uh, he also has his hand up as if he wants everyone to pick him as well. So uh, obviously we already have a case of modern democracy in play. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, but everyone everyone does agree with him and, uh, you know, chooses that uh, on the democracy, not being class rep, not Tinia being class rep, no one's decided that one yet. They'll put it into a vote, and lo and behold, Momo, Momo, wins by a landslide of two votes! Oh my god! Two votes! That's amazing! But, uh, since you're, you know, you're probably wondering, you know, how many votes did Zeke get? How many votes did Zeke get? I'm sure he had a great chance, you know, being, you know, an adult that smells like beer 24-7. Uh, he, uh, he got two, he got zero. He, he got zero, since you can't, you can't vote for yourself. But... Everyone agrees that Momo should be class rep, and Tanya feels bad for not winning the vote for Hey, for class rep. But hey, he uh, it was his idea, so he's okay. Later in the cafeteria, the same conversation that Deku would have had with Tanya and uh, Yuraka uh, happens, but instead it's Cole and and uh, and Zeke, and they're more talking about Momo being class rep than uh, Deku being class rep because Deku doesn't exist; he's dead. <laughs> so yeah, but you know. While they're talking, the intruder warning still happens. The crowd freaks out, and uh, you know they rush over to get to the exits as fast as possible. But Tenya does try to calm them down, just like in the original story. Uh, you know everything pretty much happens the same way as it did before, with you know finding out that the intruders were actually just the press, finally cutting through and getting inside the uh, protective walls and whatnot. And uh, later that day. Momo decides that it would be best if Class 1A had a vice president as well. So, with what happened earlier, she thinks it would be best if Tenya was vice president. And the class agrees and that the day ends on, you know, on that, 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 that good, you know, not sour, but, uh, uh, what's the, what's the tone you would go for? Cheerful, cheerful note. Ends on a cheerful note. There you go. Tenya got exactly, got somewhat what he wanted. He didn't become class rep, but hey, he's still a part of the, you know, the chain of command. So that's good. Anyway, Lieutenant Aizawa announces that Class 1A will be going on a field trip. Oh, yay! We're going to the zoo? No, we're going to go, you know, run around in a dangerous, hazardous situation where you might actually get injured and die, but, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> the, um, they're going to a training facility to practice more on their quirks. Yay, more training! Um, also, I guess I should address um, a couple of things. Uh, for instance, because of the fight Cole and Zeke was in during the Heroes vs. Villain practice, Cole got hit a couple times by uh, Bakugo's explosions, so he will be wearing the UA jumpsuit. But since Zeke wasn't as intense... In actuality, the fight that Zeke would have been in wouldn't have been with uh, the, the alien chick and uh, naval laser. It actually would have been with uh, Jiro and Deacon, so... Still, we're going on the idea that he still could take care of him with one for all and Momo, so whatever. Anyway, continue. His fight wasn't as intense as Don Cole was in, so Zeke's outfit is it isn't destroyed. It's not even, you know, bruised or anything like that or cut. But Bruce's clothing isn't bruised. Wow. That is impressive. Uh <laughs> but uh 
Sadly, I can't show you what Zeke's outfit looks like because I do not have a computer, therefore I cannot draw anything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so fuck that. <laughs> that's, that's sadly not going to happen, but, you know, hopefully you can use your imagination to, uh, you know, fill in the blank. I already, you know, did just did a design for Cole, and most likely I'm just going to take a picture of Deku or some other class mate wearing the UA outfit and just put Cole's face over it. <laughs> yeah, that's it? That's what it is? I figured. Um, anyway. But as class rep Momo tells everybody to go in line, entering the bus one after the other on their way to the training facility, uh, Asu, I forgot her name exactly how you're supposed to say it, but Asu, <laughs> um, uh, tells Zeke, is talking to Zeke, and he, she, she asks about how his quirk is kind of cool and that it's uh, it's almost like All Might's, but quick to react, Zeke points out that his quirk hurts himself and when, when he uses it. So that's what he, he automatically brushes that aside. No one else has to like come in and be like, but wait, you know, because Zeke already got the excuse, you know. He's quick. He's not, you know, as worrisome. He's not, he's not, he doesn't have, he's nervous, you know. So, but... Uh, it's then brought up about how Bakugo and Shotoroki, Todoroki, Shotoroki, Shoto quirks are pretty cool in that they'd be pretty cool heroes, but Bakugo with such a short temper and whatnot, he'll probably never be popular. So, yeah, that's a bit of a burn on his part, but Bakugo just immediately shouts at her for what she said, and Deacon, I'm gonna say his name wrong, but Deacon, I'm reading it in the scripts, that's what it is to me. Uh, I have a picture for you guys so you know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, points out that it isn't really a good sign that everyone knows what Bakugo's, you know, you know, character is in only a couple of days. <laughs> Bakugo then screams at him about how he's going to kick his ass. And uh, Momo intervenes telling him to stop and that we're almost there. They get to the training facility and meet 13. The search and rescue black hole hero. Everyone is surprised and amazed to see her. She explains that she built this facility to teach new heroes how to save lives in different disaster situations, and she calls it the Unforeseen Simulation Joint, aka USJ. <laughs> That's our stupid ass name. <laughs> Before they were able to begin the test, a strange black and purple rift was created in the middle of the facility that began to expand, and what came out of it? The group of villains! Just like any or- in, but just like in the original. Just like any original? Wow, good job, Scripter. Just like in the original, Izala tells Thirteen to take the students and get out, and he will take them on, um, you know, right in front, you know? Take them on. The line about Shoto being unable to take on a group with his quirk is not here, because neither Cole or Zeke know much about razor heads so you know they don't really give a shit about them that much they're not like you know they're more fans of all might well zeke is but uh you know that's not really brought up so he's just going straight ahead while 13 tries to get the students out of danger but the strange black and purple rift konogiri i'm gonna say his name like that hopefully no one gets pissed off at me approaches in front of them blocking their exit and telling him that they are there to see if all might's there and to ask if where he's at, because he should be here. They plan to kill him, so it's kind of rude not to show up. <laughs> so, I'm going to say his name again. Ijiro <laughs> and Bakugo jump in front of everyone to attack Gonogiri, but it is an unaffected, but he is unaffected by their attack, and then he proceeds to wrap everyone with his quirk. He plans to warp them across the facility and split them apart from one another. Luckily, Tenya grabs Achako and Rokito and rushes out of the warp field, but everyone else gets warped to random locations throughout the facility. So, for the sake of the what if, there is a there's a bit of an issue we got here, a little bit of an issue, so stick with me here. That comes from the fact that Deku and Minari, you know, those two that, uh, I, 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 number one presumed Deku to be dead from the blast that Cole made, and Minari being an even shittier hero than he already was, you know, he didn't get past either, so, uh, you know, they, they, they were supposed to be with, you know, Asu. They were supposed to be with the, the, the frog lady, the frog girl, and, and in the original story. But since Cole and Zeke take their place, they would be, well, they would go to the same place with them. And that's a river. 
Now, for Zeke, that's not much of an issue. Okay, well, it's water, whatever. I ain't got an electric quirk. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, coal doesn't really react well to water, so uh, he would fucking die like that. End of what if. So if you wanted this what if to, to end now, okay, there you go. Stop the video now. They die from, you know, from, you know, dropping themselves into water. <laughs> you know? Damn. <laughs> End of what if. <laughs> but, and he probably kills Zeke as well, and Asu, and you know, uh, you know, and probably all the villains who go in and are like, okay, we're gonna kick these kids' ass, and all that, you know. <laughs> you know, they probably die too, so. For the sake of the what if, we're gonna have to switch a couple of things around. Now, for Zeke, we can keep him with, you know, the place that Deku was. We can keep him there, that's perfectly fine. Cole, particularly, we gotta change up. We gotta figure out who can we replace Cole with. <laughs> Or who can we replace? Who can Cole replace? You know, so we're basically going to take one hero or one student and switch them out with Cole and whatnot. So let's get let's, let's figure out what we got. So we have a couple of options here. Just note that any of these characters we, we switch will be in the same spot. So you know, we've got to consider well, how will these heroes be you know effective near water? <laughs> so simply. We have we have three people in in the uh, in the mountain zone. We have Momo, Jiro, you know the earphone jack chick. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And uh, Dinkin. <laughs> uh, in the collapsed building zone, we have Ijiro and Bakugo. In the fire zone, we have uh, Squirrel Boy. <laughs> I'm not even gonna pronounce his name. <laughs> and um, where's it at? <laughs> Uh, and finally, we have the we have the storm zone. Not even gonna read that one. The storm zone, which has Cujo and Bug Boy. <laughs> Landsign zone has Shuto, but I won't switch him because I think Shuto would do too good in Cole's position. <laughs> he would just you know stick his foot in the water and that's it. And everyone is done for. <laughs> And Cole would probably die if he was in his position with not having any assistance whatsoever. And him just being on his own, surrounded by villains. So, we can't do that. So, I think I, I won't switch him with him. And instead, uh, you know, if, if, we, if we pick any other choice, if we do, you know, uh, if we switch Ant Boy with Cole... We lose a character to team up with Zeke and Asu, because what the fuck is Ant Boy gonna do? Bug Boy gonna do? He's gonna talk to the water? I don't think so. He's gonna talk to the little tadpoles in the water. I don't. I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> but you know, hey Zol, you know, but hey Cole teaming up with, you know, uh, fuck, forgot his name already. That's fantastic. Uh, Shadow Kid, Dark Shadow. Redundancy, that's what. You know, walking redundancy. Uh, teams up with him, then, you know, they're gonna have a real easy time, even though you do have the issue of Cole creating light through his lightning. That may weaken, you know, Dark Shadow, but pff, whatever. <laughs> we could do that one. We could do Cole with Bakugo or Cole with Ajiro, aka uh, Red, Red Riot. For any of you, you know, don't recognize Japanese names, that's cool. We could do that, or vice versa. You know that could work too. And you know, that that could be that could that could change the story pretty much, pretty well. And it would also give us a situation where Bakugo has to team up with a rival of his that he just met. <laughs> but I think, for the sake of this what if, and I mean, you guys can you know take this situation and maybe you know think of your own little what would happen if these characters did have to be in these situations and whatnot. Instead, you can do that if you want. So that's cool. But, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch, um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch, for the sake of the what if, I'm going to switch Deacon with Cole and De Cole with Deacon. I know, that's weird, what do you, but you're gonna you know, switch a lightning conduit for a lightning quirk. The issue of why we had to do this was because of water. Um, here's the thing, by the demonstration of this panel, aka this, um, ripped footage from a show, from the show itself, um, it's shown that actually, 
actually, Deacon's quirk isn't affected by water. He doesn't activate it whenever he's in water, unlike Cole. He has a better control over it. Interesting. That's a that's an interesting factoid. So he can actually be in the water, he can fall into the river or the ocean, and not cause a huge catastrophe. <laughs> of course, obviously it's still electricity, so it's going to affect water somehow, but apparently it's not... You know, Deacon's apparently a waterproof battery. He's not... <laughs> He's not coal. He's not, you know, not waterproof. So, we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so, with that, in case, with that, with, with that, you know, so Zeke, Asu, and Deacon warp into the shipwreck zone and fall into the water. Asu, quickly grabbing Zeke and Deacon, hops out of the water and onto the ship, with them being surrounded by enemies, of course. Uh, that seem to be all water-based, they will be unable to take them all on. So, they have to think of a plan to escape. But first, they need to figure out what each of their quirks. Before they can think of a plan, the villains take their first strike on the ship, cutting it in half, causing it to start sinking. Now the three have to act fast. They know they can't use too much Deacon's quirk, uh, too much power from Deacon's quirk, because now they know that if he uses too much, it spreads across other areas. He can't use it for long range, or it just goes everywhere. And then, no harm themselves, that's not very useful. <laughs> but, simply by putting his hand, which he can make into electricity, can course electricity towards it, not make it go insane and go far, but he can go s put it around his hand, then touch the water, the water will then travel through the lightning, <laughs> the lightning will travel through the water, or the electricity, however you want to call it, will travel through the water and onto all the enemies surrounding the ship. Bada book, bada boom, all of them get knocked the fuck out and almost die, probably from drowning. Um, and now, this opportunity has been made. Asu jumps as long as she can, as far as she can go, uses her tongue, snatches Dokin and, uh, and Zeke, and they hop all the way the fuck out and land on the other side, away from the electricity, um, you know, reached river. <laughs> you know, they don't land on land. They still land in the in the water, but they're far enough away from the electricity, so they're safe. And now they've gone through all the shipwreck zone. Woohoo! But uh, meanwhile, while well, Cole and Momo and K K Jero are uh, are surrounded by villains, are surrounded by villains, but they could take care of them out with you know, you know them. Out with their numbers, and they don't have to worry about Cole's electrification quirk since he can control it and aim it. You don't have to worry about it, you know, going everywhere and hitting everybody like a certain someone, <laughs> you know, so you don't have, they don't have to worry about that. They have all three members, and they're all, you know, being useful to their full maximum potential. So they're actually able to deal with all the enemies pretty easily, almost like last time, but you know, without worrying about a certain certain things. You know, have to consider certain things. So cool, they were able to deal with their situation rather well, and you know, deal with the first group of villains. Awesome. But now, with Tenya and the others who somehow didn't get wrapped to another location, didn't get worked to another location. I don't know how that works. I know. Tenya, Garachaku, and Sugar Rush dude, you know, big bulky muscle guy, but he didn't get four arms. Oh, sorry, six arms. <laughs> he didn't get six arms. He didn't get shoulder tape dude, and he didn't grab 13. So I don't know how the hell they're not taken away. I don't know how come they didn't get sailed away, but they didn't get sailed away, so whatever. 13 says to Tenya that he needs to escape and get more heroes for backup. That's the vice president. Of course, you know, but he says he needs to stay and help them, but they convince him by telling him that he needs to help others by doing that, and that leaving them to find help will be bigger help than staying here than, you know, getting fucked by all the other villains. Then, 13 attempts to use her black hole quirk to suck some dirk, I mean, Koguro, and uh, turn him into dust, but uh, he opens a portal behind her that leads to what's inside of her, causing her to suck herself into the, her own black hole. That's a sentence. Tenya thinking to himself that he has to do something. So he does what they told him to do, and he runs for the, the exit, but Koguru, Koguru, I'm gonna keep changing his name every time I say it, 
um, tries to stop him. Kogiro tries to stop him. But Mizo, you know, six, you know, six arms? Yeah, six arms. Grabs the warp portal thingy and covers it so the Tenya can get around and escape. But Kaguru is not, it's still gonna try again instead to reach for Tenya. But Ochaku, Tape Boy, and Sugar Rush Man pull him up into the air with their quirks to stop him, to give Tenya time to escape. Woohoo, he did it! He made it out. <laughs> but back with Zeke and his group. They, uh, they finally made it closer to shore, but are still, you know, playing low in the water because they're watching a racer head taking down a group of villains. They think he's got a cover that, you know, you know, even though he's not meant for, you know, head-on combat, he, uh, you know, they don't really know that, of course, but, you know, you know, they, you know, he's not meant for it, but he's, he's doing a real good job, he's kicking ass, you know, and whatnot, but... The man with the hands all wrapped around him leap at a razor head and uh, tries to grab his elbow. But he figures out when to strike. He figured he apparently figured out when to strike at a razor head while he wasn't using his quirk. If you don't know what a razor head quirk is, by the way, uh, last part I addressed what it was. It's the ability to look at someone and erase their quirk, at least for a temporary time. He uh. Apparently, this strange man figured out exactly when to strike uh, a razor head when his quirk wasn't active. So he took that opportunity and is now, you know, up close with this man, <laughs> but the, you know, take him down and whatnot. But uh, you know, as he's telling this to a razor head, a razor's elbow, a razor head's elbow starts to decay and is showing his muscles. The razor pushes the man to the ground and jumps back. He then gets surrounded by more villains, but he takes them on without losing his wounded arm, his freshly wounded arm. But the, the strange buffed up looking ass bird comes from behind and tries to attack a razor head, but with Zeke's eagerness to attack and realizing that Aizala's guard is down, you know, and isn't, he isn't aware of this man, he proceeds to jump in and punch this monster, which gets his attention, but it's unfazed by the punch. Not only that, but Zeke's arm isn't busted either, as he's, you know, thrown this punch either, so like, what the hell? I finally figured out how to control my quirk, but this guy isn't hurt by it. That's weird. But now, they got more pressing matters to attend to, for the fact that they now have that Razorhead and Zeke, because he threw himself into this mess, has to avoid this strange monster man but the man with the strange hands, you know, that guy who uh, touches people and weird shit happens to their body, like the whole missing elbow pieces and whatnot? Yeah, that guy. He, uh, he says that this monster's name is Nomu, and he's gonna kill All Might. That's fucked up. <laughs> That's gonna have to be all for now. If you have any thoughts or opinion, please comment down below. Like or dislike the video if you would, please. I would enjoy it very much. And, by the way, yes, we are still doing that Let's Play versus What If. So, if you want to see more videos like these, please comment down below. Um, hashtag What If. So, put that down here, and, you know, I'll see it, find it, and depending on how many there are of, you know, What If, hashtag What Ifs, we'll do more What Ifs for a while. But, if there are a lot of hashtag Let's Plays, then I will do more Let's Plays in the future. Particularly the, the ones I'm doing now, which is Heavy Rain, and then another one after that. Um, which I'm not going to tell you what that one is. I'm saving that for a surprise. But, um, you know, that's not, you know, it's not like permanently, if you do hashtag what if, hashtag let's play, oh, that means like this channel is going to be permanently a what if, or permanently a let's play channel, it's just that I'm going to direct some focus onto the let's play if there's a let's play hashtag out there, and if there's a hashtag what if, then, you know, I'm going to focus on that, then, you know, focus more on the what ifs for a little while. Um, but if I don't really get any responses, then... Um, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the what ifs because I have been doing let's plays for a little while, finishing off that infamous let's play, that Sonic let's play, you know, been doing that heavy rain let's play and whatnot. So I think I will take a break if there is no hashtag, you know, no, no, do let's plays more or do web heavy rain more or anything like that. 
do let's plays more, do you know, what ifs more, or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the what ifs then. And it has to be a substantial amount. You know, it has to be at least five or four people saying let's play or heavy or, or sorry, hashtag let's play or hashtag what if for me to decide if that's what you guys want. Just one or two or three of you all doing it ain't gonna cut it. Sorry. I want a real, I want, and also, please, just so that you can get the videos you want to see, share this video so you can get, you know, more people involved in this contest and whatnot, this challenge for content. <laughs> so please comment down below your opinions, your thoughts, and your wants for this channel. And, uh, you know, and share down below, share this video please, so that this video can get around, people can check it out, people can hopefully subscribe, people can like the video, that hopefully gets this video on recommendations and it spreads out even more and more, and, you know, that's cool, I like that, I wish that was the case. I wish everybody didn't have to have to put work into doing it, but it has to be the case, because YouTube sucks. So please, please do that for me, thank you. Thank you very much if you did that. Thank you very much if you didn't do that either. So, I mean, I'm appreciative either way because you watched the video. Haha. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, like, please like the video if you did. Dislike it if you didn't. You know, your opinion is important. So, you know, comment down below what your thoughts, what your opinions, what ideas you have. Maybe this what if could go down to or whatnot. And, uh, you know, and subscribe so you know when more videos are coming out, and also hit that notification bell so you get notified for it as well, because YouTube sucks. But, uh, you know, you know, we'll get done, if, if it's what if, hashtag what if, then we'll just go do, um, two more what if, uh, not parts, but what if, like, stories. I'll do, like, a season one of the Cole McGrath My Hero Academy what if. Which we're actually almost near the end of anyway, so we're almost near a season finale for that. But, uh... And then I'll do another what if. Another unique what if. Um, yeah, unless there's a... If, um, it ought to be something I will make up myself. You know, oh hey, you know what? I got an idea. Let's do this what if. Then there you go, we'll do that. But if I get some suggestions down in the comments down below, please do suggest something if you want to see it. You know. If, you know, there's a lot of likes to it, or, you know, I think it's really cool, then, you know, hey, I'll do it. I'll do that, what if. Sounds like an awesome idea. So please, send down a suggestion, you know, of anything. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I, it doesn't have to be My Hero related. It could be video games. It could be uh, anime or TV show, depending on if I've watched it, of course. I can't do, like... Firefly what if, because I don't have any fucking clue what Firefly is, so. Either way, the, uh, the next time, you know, it's time that, I think it's time that I wrap this up, I think I've given, I think I've talked a little too much now, don't you think? I think so. So, it's time to wrap this stuff up. If you guys want to see more videos like these, please do subscribe and hit that bell so you can be informed, and I hope you all enjoyed this video and this what if and uh, I hope you all are excited as I am for part four what if Cole McGrath was in my hero academy thank you all for watching I hope you all feel the same about how I feel about you know seeing that video come out uh, see you all later bye bye